Hello Year 13, today we're going to look at how to draw a Cassegrain Reflecting Telescope. I think the best way to do this is if you grab yourself a piece of paper, a pen or a pencil and a ruler and kind of uh, draw along as we go. Uh, and we're going to start off by drawing our principal axis uh, down the centre of our page as we have done previously just like this and everything we do can now be based around that I'm going to next draw a concave primary mirror now I'm going to use a round thing to, to draw around just so I can keep the curvature. Uh, it's important to note the actual telescope's mirror itself isn't spherical or isn't circular and we'll talk about that in a second. So okay, this looks good to me. I'm going to click over to a different colour. Okay, so and I'm going to put dashes on the right hand side of this curve to show that this side is the reflecting surface, not this side. There we go. And we're going to start off with two axial rays, so two rays that are parallel to the principal axis. And okay, this looks sensible. I'll use use red for these ones make sure they are as parallel as we can get them here they come in they strike the mirror here and we'll have one on the other side of the principal axis coming in here like that um, the mirror is designed in such a way that any rays of light that come in parallel to our principal axis will get refracted or sorry not refracted reflected towards this point here we'll call that F O sometimes you'll see it labeled as C as the center of curvature for this this uh, objective mirror sometimes called the primary mirror. So the rays of light will strike our mirror here, they'll get reflected towards this point uh, and if, if nothing else were to happen then it would create a real image here of our, of our object that's infinity. Uh, however there's something else that happens before it strikes that. Uh, it's designed with a secondary mirror in between this point and our primary mirror. Now this is convex, so let's label that up, so convex secondary mirror. These rays of light they would be going towards our focal points here however when they strike that they get reflected and we can show that the path they would have travelled on using using dotted lines here same for this one and the reflected rays of light we want to show meeting one another on the principal axis as close as we can get to this gap that I've left in our mirror So I've not done this perfectly, so this is this is a common mistake that people make. You must have these rays of light crossing on the principal axis. Mine's just a tiny bit too high, so I've not done very well there. Uh, once they exit their primary mirror, we now want a lens axis for a converging lens. Uh, 
that looks like that. This is called the eyepiece lens. You have to make sure that your rays of light get to the lens axis of the eyepiece lens. Um, what else do we need? Yeah, let's label this up with parallel rays of light. from an object at infinity. So let's just show that these are parallel. Let's put the principal axis here. And I think that's everything we need. Now it is worth noting, I'll come back to what I said earlier about the shape of this lens. This lens needs to be parabolic, not spherical, and we'll have a look at why in a second. Uh, this must be convex, as we've said before. These rays of light must cross after the secondary mirror, and you need to have an eyepiece lens. Uh, I'll expand on the idea of the why we have a parabolic rather than a spherical lens uh, mirror. Uh, I'll draw a smaller curved mirror here. So if we imagine that this is a, a spherically curved mirror, the problem we get, let's draw a principal axis, is that with rays of light that are far away from that principal axis, they're going to get reflected towards a point that's closer to the to the mirror than the other points. So that comes in here, gets reflected. Here's the focus for those rays, and the ones that are close to our principal axis will get refracted to a different point. As I mentioned, this is called spherical aberration, and this is when off axial rays focus closer to the mirror, uh, causes a blurred. image. A really good example of this is probably something you've all heard of, the Hubble Space Telescope. So when that was launched in the 90s, they spent billions of pounds sending it up into space, took the first few photos and noticed they were really blurred. And they hadn't taken into account this spherical collaboration because there was a slight change in shape of the mirrors under zero gravity. So what they had to do is design another lens, put that up onto a space shuttle and pop it in front of the Hubble Space Telescope to correct that, that issue. Um, and again, you had those, those blurred images. Uh, the reflecting telescope is better than a refracting telescope that uses lenses because it's much easier to make very, very large mirrors than it is to make large lenses. And it's the size of this objective mirror or the size of the objective lens which um, gives a telescope its resolving power and we'll look at that in a later date but mirrors can make uh, be much larger so they can collect more light and they have a greater resolving power.